Purple Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. That's right, Kevin O'Connell. Away we go. Purple Access. Judd, Chip Scoggins, uh, Roscoe producing. And if you look right over Chip's shoulder, you see some purple wall. And you Ooh. think to yourself, hold on a second. Is he in the wall? Look at that. He's in the yeah. media room at the wow. Vikings. Fresh <laughs> off the two weeks out, Quasi Adolfa Mensa press conference, pre-draft press conferences where they spill all their secrets. They tell us what QB they like. They tell us what the parameters of the trade-ups are. What did you glean today as I'm sure Quasi attempted to dodge all questions? You know, I actually thought he he... Uh, talked pretty openly as, as best he could about the process and and just kind of the I don't know if it's tug of war but just the the you know debate that they're having it in terms of not only like who they like um, at quarterback but what it's going to take to get that player and he mentioned you know um, having a walkaway price that this is too much. He talked about balancing the walkaway price versus uh, the importance of that position. Um, he talked a lot about uh, overpaying while also understanding that you have to build a roster around this this uh, this quarterback. But he, you know, he was asked about just the risk of taking a quarterback and the uncertainty of comes with, that comes with that. And he said, you know what? Yes, there is a risk, but you can't be scared by that risk. And that, to me, was the most encouraging thing you heard, that um, he's not afraid, and this organization is not afraid, that if they find the guy that they like, um, they're willing to part with assets to move up and try to take him. And, I, you know, he was talking about this, you know, when you take a quarterback, there's a marriage, we fall in love, and it's towards the end of the press conference, I said, with all this thing, like, can you love two guys? Can there be two guys that you would be comfortable with? And he said, yes, absolutely. He said, polygamous? I think, yeah. He, th- he said, I think, <laughs> yes, right. You can't do that except in Utah. <laughs> he said, don't tell my wife that. Uh, but he said, I, he, and he said, I think organizations get in trouble where they say, it's this guy or this guy only and no one else. He said, we right. love multiple guys here and, um, and for different reasons. And so they're getting to get they're going to get a quarterback judge it's just whether they move up or do they wait and try to get a panic at 11 how much do you think so like it i agree this is like it's no it's not breaking news that i'm almost certainly that, that they're going to draft yes. one but from what you can glean first of all how much do you think that there is not not a divide because i don't i don't want to paint this as dissension but yeah how much of this is Quasi at work and Kevin at work? And yeah. and if you were to if you were to place a bet right now on what you think, for, forget the name. Let's just go with the draft position. Who do you think wins out? Like, are you fairly co- confident they get to three or more likely no. four and five? Yeah. Or do you think that there is a good chance that they have to wait until eleven? And just to be clear, I've seen some <laughs> folks that think Penix is going to fall to like the second round. No. I'm pretty sure he's a first round pick. Yeah. I might be wrong, but that's my sense. Um I I don't yeah, I don't think he's going to fall there to the second round. Um I think well he Quasi did say a lot of the fact finding and a lot of the the interview process in terms of, you know, really digging into these guys was was O'Connell driven because that's his expertise. Yeah. He said, yeah, they, you know, they have the analytics and some of the character things that obviously everybody's has some knowledge about, but, you know, a lot of it was uh, O'Connell in terms of identifying what he wants to hear and see from, from these guys in terms of their football knowledge and acumen, all those things. Um, I don't think, I think the price would be too much for them to get the three. Um, I agree. Left unsaid is what, what did he, 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 he used the word walk away. What is their walkaway threshold? Is that the first next year? Is it more than that? Um, I, <laughs> Judd, is there agreement five, on that chip? Like that? Well, that's my question too. Is Kevin going to say our walkaway price should be the? You know, that's my other question. Well, that that's the thing. It's hard to you know they're not going to share that. But right, 
I'm guessing the coach wants the best quarterback available, and he if he's in love with the guy. His walkaway price is going to be different than probably the GM who's in charge of the full roster, you know. Um, but he, and I, I say this just like when you're when you're talking about the quarterback position, mm-hmm. if you get it right, the price doesn't matter. If you get it wrong, you're going to get fired, right? I mean, so, so that's going to be someone else's problem, you know, the roster. But but if you get it right, how often do you, people complain about what the price was to get it right? You know, right. So um, I, I, I'm curious to, to know, though, because, you know, the report came out that they're going to, to work out Jane Daniels uh, next week. Um, I can't believe Washington's going to pass on him, Judd. But, but, but if you're the Vikings, you, do, you have to do all your due diligence just in case that something crazy happens on draft day that um, – you know, that he, that it is an option on draft day that you might be able to go and get. So you have to do your homework. Now, Caleb Williams, I don't think I would do it. I mean, Chicago's not passing on him, right? So, right. But, but Daniels, May, McCarthy, Penix, Bo Nix, maybe. Um, I think you have to do that. So, but I, I just, I, I would love to know the difference in price between going to three, going to four, going to five. And I also think that there's a case to, to be made that if you're the commanders you want the vikings to work out daniels because of of this you know we all assume in in hearing what you just said about what uh crazy said about the walkaway price right but we don't Mm -hmm. know what that is and more importantly here's the other weird thing because this decision is so important um because you nailed it man if you get this right, ain't no one going to come to you in three years and be like, oh boy, remember when we threw in that 27 yeah. second round pick? The other thing is, this is, you know, I think the will certainly let their football people do their job, but this yeah. is this is not the type of decision that, that the owners wouldn't chime in on. So if Kevin O'Connell yeah. says, you hired me for this, so that walkaway price might be very different than what we perceive it to be. And, and and here's your thing. And Seifert asked um, Quasey about this, our friend Kevin Seifert. Everybody doesn't have the same walkaway price, right? Like, you know, Seifert asked Quasey, "How do you account for the irrational uh, thought process of other teams? Because you can't. Like, you may say I'm not willing to go there. Well, maybe Denver does. Maybe the Raiders do. Maybe the Giants do. Maybe some other team. So." You don't want to be, and, and Quasey said, you know, you have what you think is a rational idea, but you also don't want to wake up the next morning and have regret that you weren't aggressive enough. Uh, that's that, exactly that's, right. That's it. And so I, I keep coming back to this, Judd. This is too important to play defense. Yep. You have to play offense. And would you prefer, so at the end of the day, if in a couple of years, four years, you're fired. Would you prefer that it's because you gave up too much to get this pick and got it wrong or because you didn't like either one yes, is yeah. going to potentially get. So, so I sort of like what you just said, which is play offense. At least you'll go down swinging, play yeah. defense and you'll, and, and you'll be back on your heels regretting your decision because, you know, we talk about these trade charts, Chipper, you know, the trade chart says this, when it's a top five pick in a quarterback class, that's four or five deep. Yeah. I don't think the trade charts count. No, no. I mean, I, yes, they'll pay attention to them to some degree, but it's sure. like, if, if they fall in love and this is where you have to trust O'Connell, like this is the guy. And if it's not, then you'll get fired too. I mean, it's just, it's how it is. Uh, not to be crass about it, but that's, it's just, oh. it's the nature of the business. It's, that there's, when they're on the clock and next or two Thursdays from today is going to be one of the most important days in this organization's history, or not history, but in, in last, what, 10 years or whatever. I think history. Like, I, I don't think you're wrong, man. Maybe not history, but in, in, you know, in last decade, because they don't have a championship. This could yeah. get them a championship. I think it's, I think it's absolutely huge. And so, yes, I mean, you, you do not want to wake up the next day and say, man, I wish we would have committed an extra, whatever it th- would have taken to get up to, I know, 
And, you know, and, and yes, you have to build a roster around that quarterback and have the right environment. And everybody knows that and agrees with that um, because we've seen quarterbacks that have, you know, high draft picks get thrown on a bad roster. It doesn't work, right? Right. But there's, you know, that's also saying, guess what, Quasi? You need to draft well, too, which to this point, you know, 2022, 2023 drafts yeah. leave a lot to be desired. And so um, not to say he's going to have home runs, you know, if he didn't take a quarterback. So I, I just – they know it. They know and, – and, and, and I do think – that's what I was trying to get at. It's like, is there just one guy that you're zeroing in on or, or is there two or three guys that you say, you know what, if we land in with this guy, we're going to be happy and we feel like he's a winner. And I, I, I do think that that's the case. I do think there's multiple guys that they could – that they would be happy with. Roscoe, go ahead. Two-parter from today for you, Chip. Did uh, Judd and I actually joked before you hopped on that sometimes general managers can say a lot by not saying anything. Did you get any of that today from Quasi? Was there anything he didn't say that maybe tipped his hand to the assembled media a little bit? And then the second part, do we have any idea, did he touch on no picks in the second or third round? You know, the NFL draft, everybody talks about the first round, but... Most teams yeah. are drafting starters and starting talent in the second and third and sometimes fourth round. Well, the Vikings don't have that after their 23rd pick. Their next pick comes in at what the eighth pick of the fourth round. So there's a huge yeah. gap there. So do we no. know how they plan to play the night? Yeah, no, it, that, that part didn't come up because it was literally all quarterback talk and just the, you know, the, uh, you know, the situation that they find him in. So we didn't talk about the, you know, the number of picks they had. Um, the only question he really dodged was when Mark Craig asked him how many are in that first round category that they would put, you know, how many quarterbacks are in that group that you would take in the first round. And he said, I don't want to tip my hand to other um, teams because then that would that'd make negotiations tougher if they know. Oh, Vikings only think there's three or four or whatever it is. So he, that's the only one he said, I'll tell you, I'll tell you after the draft, how many we thought <laughs> uh, were there, but um, and it, that was no surprise. Cause that's a, that's a leverage thing. Um, yeah. We were just talking about what, he had an interesting thing about leverages. Um, leverages. I wish I could recite it verbatim, but basically what you're willing not to do, you know, that's your leverage. And so, I, I, I would love to be a fly on the wall with these conversations up there with him and Kevin O'Connell and kind of playing out the mock draft scenario and how this thing could unfold. Well, and and the, dis- the disagreement, because I mean, there, yeah. you know, one, one guy is probably like, I got two guys I love and the GM's pr- pr- probably like, couldn't that be four guys? And the yeah. GM's trying to build out a roster and he sort of, he screwed up, you know, the 2022 draft. So he's trying to get talent and O'Connell is, is probably just b- bottom line. This will make or break us. I will say this chipper. We've covered this team for a long time, you know, di- different GMs, head of player personnel coaches. Yeah. Um, everything I've seen about the quarterback process, as far as the steps they're taking, yeah. I really like, like, I love, you know, pro days are fine, but they are orchestrated. They're photo yeah. shoots, right? I like, like it's 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 your glamour shot. You go mm-hmm. and look as good as possible. You have your receivers. You have your workout. I love this thing of going and seeing everyone privately. The McCowan yeah. high, uh, d- decision to bring in a guy that played QB to help vet these guys. I I love. I do feel confident that in this decision, the Vikings are giving themselves a really really good shot to get it right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you won't look back at it and say it wasn't thorough, right? right. I mean, because when you're – the pro days is, are scripted. Like, yeah. it's set up for the guy to look good. Like, if you don't look good at your pro day, then, it, you know, that is a major red flag. So, I think what they were, what Quasi was saying is, like, when he was in uh, San Fran, he was kind of in uh, – not in charge of, but the interview process through probably the combine and, and when they had the – top 30 visits and those type things. But this is different. Like he said, they wanted to see how guys take the coaching. It is interesting. He said in their conversations with these, all the quarterbacks, he said, they've all had different leadership styles, but they all, they, they liked them, but they were just came at things, which is not, I guess, 
unusual because you have different personalities, you know, but, um, but I think they're really, really doing a ton of homework and just trying to get to know them as best they can individually and not in a group setting of the, you know, the combine or, or top 30 visit, even that you're going to meet them on campus and doing different things. So they're definitely doing their homework and, but there's just, there's, you know, obvious things that you can't, predict you don't you know you can you can study all the film you want and do all the put them on the board and ask them all these questions but how's he play on sunday when it, you know it, it's just you know that that's the one thing they can't factor in mm-hmm. uh, there's doing homeworks on the doing homeworks wow doing homework on the quarterbacks but then there's also doing homeworks on potential trade partners up and down depending on how the draft shakes out where are those conversations at? Do we know about two weeks out how much of the that infrastructure of potential deals? We know it's been talked about, but how close would you say that they're at when it comes to, okay, if this happens, if we pick up the phone and we call the chargers, this absolutely gets the deal done. Where do you think they're at with doing the homework on potential trade partners? And I guess that question goes for both of you. I, w- I would bet they've already done preliminary calls just to kind of get a feel for what uh, teams are thinking. You do wonder, like, uh, I, you know, he used that, you know, that where I keep coming back to walk away. What's the walk away price? I don't know if they, if that, if they developed that from, you know, these kind of initial conversations with teams like, hey, what are you, you know, what would it take or something they've just done independently? Okay. This is what we feel comfortable with. Would that, would that change, Judd, on draft night, though, when there's oh, pressure yeah. and, and excitement and, oh my gosh, the tension is like, we don't want to lose our guy. Absolutely. Maybe we're willing to get more more than what we initially thought that that's, that's the uh, interesting thing to me. Well, and that, I, I guess the question is too, is the walkaway price, something that they've all agreed upon by now is the walkaway price, something that the GM has said should be. And O'Connell's like, Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. But then it gets to draft night two weeks out. It certainly appears that whatever is going to transpire is going to transpire at the earliest on draft day. Now, I and think so. Probably yeah. draft night. And your your walk away price when the pick gets to the Chargers and the Chargers call you and say we got the Broncos on line one, and yeah. JJ McCarthy's the last guy like like the last big guy, um, I think that changes. But uh, we're gonna find out like like this draft itself and and this entire spring and summer. But this draft itself is gonna tell us so much because it's yeah. gonna tell us how, how much power O'Connell has. It's going to tell us what Quasi's appetite is to really be a trader on Wall Street as as yeah. opposed to day trading. Like, there's just so many things we're going to find out. And and the thing is too is like, you know, if you're the team that's you know sitting two, three, four, five, it does you no good to make that trade now because the price no. could change significantly. You know, ten days from now or the night of the draft, so you wouldn't do it now. Um, Judd does drafting a quarterback. In the first round, you know, three, four, five, eleven, wherever they do it, does that reset their clock? This regime's clock? I think it does. Yes. I do too. I think they might both get I I was mocked, I was laughed at. I said a couple of weeks ago, I would not be surprised if they draft a quarterback if they both get contract extensions before the season starts. Yeah, I don't I don't know if it's would be like the formality, but I think just in perception or maybe with the ownership, they'd be like, Okay, this is a reboot. Like yep. this is a clear reboot of what this regime's doing, so I, I think it does kind of reset their clock. And it, whether they got an extension now or after the season, I think you do have to. Because this is an ownership sure. thing. If you're drafting a quarterback and you're giving up first round, you know, picks to go up and move a guy, this is an all in hey, reboot. I'm this correct. is an organizational reboot. This is not the GM. This is, this is everybody. Correct. This is everybody. And so. I don't, I, you know, I don't know if that factors into the calculus at all, but um, they know it. I mean, the fact that Quasi, you know, Rick wouldn't even tell us if, it, if this was Wednesday, like in the pre-draft thing, you know. I mean, right? Quasi's Bones not dodging. Right. Yeah, Quasi's not dodging. I mean, they know they have to have a quarterback. It's, it's obvious. It's just really when you listen to him talk, it's just, uh, it's a poker game right now. Like, what's it going to take to get him, and and how much are they willing to give up? And right. Um, cause I, I do think he said they love multiple guys. I, I think they've zeroed in on, you know, who they would be comfortable with. Now it's just, what's it going to take to get them? And, um, are they comfortable giving up that, that kind of 
draft capital. I will say this too, you know, part of, of the importance here is if you look at the infrastructure here, right? Uh, because I, I mean, we have seen QBs fail because they fail and they turned out to be overdrafted, not that good. But we've seen a lot of guys fail because they get put into situations that are terrible. Bad situations. Bryce yeah. Young. Bryce Young went to a dumpster fi fire. Like if Drake May gets taken by the Patriots or yeah. by the Vikings, I think there's a big difference because yeah. here it's so. So I do think the Vikings potentially are in a situation to put a player um, over the top in some ways from a quarterback standpoint, because if you look at what you're going to be playing with, if you look at the coaching staff, if you look at O'Connell's dedication to the position, mm -hmm. um, there are not a lot of teams I can th think of. In fact, there might be none. If I'm a young QB who's going to be drafted that I would put in, on my list ahead of the opportunity to play here. You play indoors. I mean, you play with Justin Jefferson. Justin I could go Jefferson, down an yeah. entire list. Like yeah. the bear, the bears are, are improving, but their coach is a defensive guy and yeah. fields didn't develop at, as expected. I just think the Vikings offer you un, unlike like yeah. the ponder thing. I think this team offers you a real chance to have a real shot because your infrastructure is so sound. Well, that's, I was going to use that word infrastructure because yeah, I mean, when you start with, JJ and Addison and you know when, when Hawkinson gets healthy it's not a bad thing for a, a quarterback to walk into and, and I think the biggest thing is how much uh O'Connell invests in the quarterback and yes. just the relationship I mean look at the time and the intention that he he had to create that relationship he had with Cousins like it was remember the first training camp where he talked about leadership and this is Kirk's team and and all the time that they spent we're having all these he just, uh, that is his area, you know? And so I think, you know, and then, you know, they just released the coaching staff last week. They got like 9 million coaches on staff. That, you know, <laughs> you're going to have all these resources. So I agree with you there. It's not, the, it's not a perfect roster, obviously. Um, they're still, but they're trying to, you know, fix the defense. Um, that'll help. But Quasi, he made the, he, he was talking about this today and he said, it's just hard when you're asking a rookie to um, win on third down in this league, you know, where you're where you're surrounded by not much talent and saying, okay, elevate us, go, go, you know, pick everybody up. Patrick Mahomes can probably do that, right? You know, but he but he even he great... sat for a year, Chipper. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's just it's hard to think um, a quarterback in is just going to walk in to a terrible situation around him and Correct. elevate everything. It, it just. Correct. On the talent thing, too, one thing that's going to help this quarterback, if they play right away, the plan, depending on, they might have a quarterback that they draft and say, okay, they can start week one, Sam Darnold, you're going to help mentor this guy. There's also, could be a guy or two that they say we love him, but we'd prefer that they sit the entire year or most of yeah. the year. Whoever that quarterback is, Chip and Judd, this is not the world's greatest offensive line, but it's a lot better than what we have seen before in the past. And when you take Brian O'Neill and you take Darius on, they're both healthy. They're likely to not get him killed, which I think is one thing that's also important to keep in mind. It's not just the skill position talent. It's that the offensive line, if they stay healthy, is likely to not get him killed. And I think that's a big part of a young's quarter, a young quarterback's development. Yeah, I mean, the tackles are good. I still think they need to fix their interior. They need to upgrade there of the offensive line. But um, it's not a guy's going to be running for his life. You know, so. It's also why, though, Chip, if they pick quarterback at 11, I think pick number 23 could easily be traded for more picks. Or maybe I, there's an I, offensive lineman at 23 that you like and you take there. Or a defensive tackle. I, You know, that whole let's trade down and get a – you know, more picks just it take burned, the burned, the burned them a few it, years ago. Well, you got to just be, drives me crazy. It drives you got to be right if you guy. do it. You can't, be I know. Wrong. Yes, no, just take the guy at 23 or yeah. whatever spot, you know. So, yeah, the, Judd, this is uh, it's fascinating to talk about and it's fascinating to think about how they might play this thing out because, you know, obviously we don't know what they're talking about behind closed doors, right? Um, other than they got to have the quarterback, they got to solve it, but. The thing that makes it so intriguing is you don't know what anybody else is doing around them and who's going to be super aggressive to try to get in front of them. Correct. And the Broncos scare me. Sean Payton's yeah. not a young man. And the Raiders. And the Raiders. And the Raiders scare you. And the Giants are And the in, Giants who 
Well, the Giants are where I wanted the Vikings when I said just lose games. It's okay. The Giants have the pick (laughs) I wanted the Vikings to have because now they can easily pop up, right? And if they and 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 look, Daniel Jones is going to be back for a year. But after that, you can get rid of Daniel Jones. So like that's this is why when you're this is why when you're winning meaningless games and then you slide back down and the fan base is like, well, they gave it a good try. I'm like, no. Well, that that's what I'm saying. Like you got to be aggressive. You can't play defense because you can't say ah the Giants got Daniel Jones. Well, that's that's a if you're thinking that way, no. 100%. I, I love your uh, com- comparison, though. This is the, you know, you do not want to wake up on Friday and say, why did I have so much to drink last night? You know, <laughs> I got such a headache now. I didn't have my faculties about me, you know, because you're yeah. you're right. And 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 the, the Bills G- GM had that great quote about, you know, people said, Josh Allen, you traded up for Josh Allen. Are you nuts? And he's like, well, two things. One of two things take place either you all are, are like that was a great pick or i'm fired yeah and, and it, 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 it was he the gm too that's like if you hit on that quarterback that, nobody that was, cares about the price that's the same quote yeah yeah, yeah he's right it, he's exactly right and if you get it wrong you're gonna get fired yeah so but i'm gonna get fired with the guy that i trusted as opposed to that's you it. know okay we'll have darnold start for a year and now it's yeah. it's what i call and i've gotten pushback but it it's what i call the Vikings getting cute, trading yeah. back from the from the pick that they took scene with to take another safety when one of the best safeties was there. That's getting cute. And the problem with that is you got to make sure if you get cute that you're going to hit. Don't, don't give don't give, give me the old. Uh, well, uh, draft picks are you know you never know you're taking <laughs> shots. Yeah. No, yeah. if you're going to do that, you've got to be right. And if you're not right, then then you have to reassess why you weren't yeah. right. And that's where. Yeah. But I do like I do like what I've seen so far, and like what you're saying that Quasi said. I like this. I like this I approach. Too. It I sounds do. it sounds like it's on point to being at least um, the right thought process. I. I think he's going to be aggressive, Judd. I think he's going to move up and get their guy. I, I think it's going to, you know, we talk about the walk away, but I think they know that this decision is the most important decision in pro sports. They're going to be super aggressive. I I just feel, I have a gut feeling about, because um, I don't, you don't make that trade with Houston to get 23. Right. Well, to not do this. And they're like, we didn't make that trade. Houston approached us. Well, you still got 23. <laughs> you still hey, get it. Yeah. Last question for, yeah. for you. Just to play things out here, and I brought yeah. this, this up a lot, but I think it's it's uh, certainly uh, germane to our conversation. How much do you think, first of all, the 2022 so far epic failure? But yeah. you know, that's a that that's definitely an analytical. Hey, I'm going to trade back from what 14 to 32, but I'm going to get more picks. Yeah. That's what I call getting cute. Um, and then the clip that I go back to, and Declan mocks me, but it's true. Oh, it's the, true. The the yeah. Kevin O'Connell basically saying, hang up the phone take take and him. take Addison. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about here. Um, and, and, you know, 1,000% right. Like the kid that came in yeah. and had a great year. How much do you think that this has impacted the thought process? You know, because Qua- Quasi, in his defense, is not a GM a long time. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like he screwed that up because he went with what he thought was best, but sports yeah. and real life don't really mix. How much do you think that that has gotten us to where, where we are now? Because the fact that Kevin basically almost took the phone and threw it across the room, <laughs> I think was incredibly instructive on how much yeah. things had changed within one, one year. Yeah. Um, I think, well, there's equity there because he trusted his head coach and it turned out, you know, Hey, we made the right pick. Right. Right. Um, I, I think he's probably listened to O'Connell enough to know that, you know, here's the guys that are reasonable for us to get, you know, we don't have enough ammunition to try to get Caleb Woods, probably Jaden Daniels. Right. There, there's a walkway president. But if, if, if they love May or McCarthy or both of them or even Panic, whoever, and O'Connell says, "We got to have this guy. This is a this is your one swing." I, I do think there's enough um, understanding from from Quasi to say, "Okay, you know what? I'm going to trust what he says about this quarterback." And because this is both of them, Judd. This is both right. their pick. This is 100%. not Quasi's pick. This is not O'Connell. It's both their pick. So. 
they're a package on this, right? I would think if they move up and take a guy, this is who they get. Now, what happens if if they don't do that and they sit and wait and they take? That's what would be interesting. Like, you know, hey, I wanted to move up. No, I wanted to build the roster. But I, I think they're going to be all in on trying to move up and, and doing it. So, I, I think he does value Kevin's input on that. I think what I'm most interested though is if they don't. 100% see eye to eye on who that number one guy is. One is still going to have to cede to the other in that scenario, maybe of moving up and taking somebody. And who is that? And let's say KOC likes a quarterback better than Quasey. Will, will Quasey still move up and do it for KOC or will no. he hold firm and say, no, I don't want that guy. Yeah. That, that's, that's interesting. The that's the interesting in, part. Yeah. That's where the, yeah. that's where the Wilfs will be your tiebreaker. Cause that, that's let, let's say Daniels goes too. And the Patriots are sitting there and, and, you know, if they say, if Kevin says, man, May is the guy, is Quasi going to say, yeah, but that price, could we get McCarthy at four or five or even later? I would love to be in that room. Well, <laughs> I do I'd think the Wilfs get involved then, don't you? Uh, in at least helping to break that tie. Man, I don't it's know if franchise. you're franchise. If you're on the clock, can you have? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously they're in the room. Got 15 minutes. Yeah, it, it'll be. No, it's a quick noted answer. Drafts, noted draft scouts, Mark, Ziggy, and Lenny. Yeah. Is it 15 well, or 10 now? It might be 10. I forget. I it, it used to be 10, 15. Right? It might Was be it 10 now. It might be 10 now. It, it changed. Yeah, yeah, it, you it, got yeah. time. You got time to make but up. That's, that's going to be. Uh, I can't imagine what Washington's or uh, New England's phone is going to be like when they're on the clock. And the other down question, to ten minutes, Judd. Ten minutes. Ten, yeah, ten minutes. Thanks, like Roscoe. And the other the the other thing to keep keep in mind here is the Drake May camp. If I'm the Drake yeah. May camp and the Vikings are on the horn to the Patriots, I know where I want to be. And it ain't yeah. New England defensive coach franchise is a mess. Yeah. Like like Roster, yeah. Bryce Young has to serve as instructive, right? Yeah, yeah. Like you can't look we, at that poor guy. I'm not yeah. convinced he sucks. I'm not convinced he sucks at all. I think he was put in yeah. a terrible position. Yeah, I mean, it. Quasey's right. I mean, he talked about it. He's like, you know, it matters the environment that you – and he's saying environment. Huge. He's talking about roster and all the he's, things that it's go huge. into. It's like, yeah, I mean, that you can really kill a guy's development that way, you know. So, yeah. um, so oh, man, it's fascinating stuff. It is, Chipper. Great stuff, sir. And, I'll, of course, I'll always check out uh, Chip Scoggins' columns. Does outstanding work at the Star Tribune. Roscoe, mm-hmm. thanks much. The show is Purple Access, uh, sponsored by our friends at Quick Trip. See you soon.